Hey guys, welcome back to No Catch Name. It's me, Ella, and this is episode number 83. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, I got a couple, let's see here, I got one, two, three, four, five finished objects <laughs> to share with you. A couple whips, and I'm actually surprised I don't have more. I thought I had more, but when I was making my notes earlier, I realized I only have two, so I need to start some more stuff. Um, I do have some patterns waiting to be started, <laughs> but, um, I was actually, like, counting yardage of yarns earlier to see how much, if I had enough of certain yarns to make, um, some cardigan type things with. But, yeah, anyways, I'm cooking dinner. So, I may have to, like, cut the video to go, you know, cook and then come back. And hopefully there'll be no interruptions. Jesse's not here. He's at my mom's. And so, if anybody interrupts us, it'll be someone knocking or a phone call. <laughs> but, yeah. So, this episode probably won't be too long. I say that a lot and then it's, like, an hour later. But, <laughs> I just have the f a few um, finished objects that's got hair on it. Uh, whips. I got one acquisition. And uh, the Knit Crate giveaway. Which I actually haven't drawn a winner for yet. <laughs> I guess I'll do that while filming, but, um, yeah, so, I'm trying to listen, I think my water is about to boil, I'm making some macaroni and cheese, but yeah, so I'm gonna show you my finished objects and my whips and do the knit crate drawing and my one acquisition and, uh, maybe a little bit of a life update. Finished objects. Okay, the first one I'm gonna show you is right here, <laughs> you can see it. I'm actually really excited about it because I've been working on it what feels like forever, um, I can't remember when I started it, but, <laughs> and it took me a forever to finish because it was a project that had three strands held together, and there's, there's only like four colors on the whole thing other than like the nose, so it was, um, like anywhere between three to nine strands I was having to deal with at a time. What is this? Woo, he's huge. <laughs> it is a eagle, and if you're not and from America, or don't know much about America, Eagle is like our bird, you know, it's like um, the symbol of freedom and all that stuff. And he's wearing a patriotic hat, which I think is adorable, and he's got like a heart uh, with a star on it. It looks kind of like the flag, you know, very patriotic and American. <laughs> but um, he's huge. He's bigger than he was supposed to be because he's written to be held uh, two worsted weights together, and I held three worsted weights together because I wanted him to be bigger. And I also wanted it to go quicker, and it ended up not going quicker because it was a big pain in the butt. In retrospect, I should have used, like, blanket yarn. <laughs> that would have been a better idea, I think. But, uh, you know, whatever. It's done now. It's finished. He does sit up. I can't really sit him up right here because I got stuff all over the table. Maybe he doesn't sit up perfectly, but he kind of sits up. <laughs> there you go. But um, I made him to enter into our county fair, which is, um, I think it starts the very last day of August. Let's see here. Yeah, I think so. But um, the actual fair fair like doesn't start till the first day of September or something like that. I don't know. But anyways, he's going to be entered into the category uh, patriotic decoration. Because he's kind of like a pillow is what I was going for. <laughs> but um, it's just a giant amigurumi. But he is a paid for pattern by Heidi Yates, uh, which is Snappy Tots. And it is called Spirit. I thought I knew it. Spirit the Eagle Stuffy. <laughs> right? Yes. And he's adorable. I think he's cute. You make a big giant sum sum shape. It kind of reminds me of that. <laughs> and um, this is separate. The eyes are separate. The nose is separate. The wings are separate. And then the hat is separate. But I did um, stitch it on at the ear flaps to keep it from falling off. And to help hide Jesse's stain that he got on it. <laughs> the only thing I like didn't do for the pattern is you're supposed to, at the end of the hat, you're supposed to go around the whole thing with blue to, like I guess, you know, give it... <sighs> I'm so bad at words, to give it a finished look, and I was, by the time I got to that part, I was like, okay, I'm done, I'm over it, let's just finish it, and I think it looks fine with the red and blue, but it's cute, and I made a multicolored pom-pom, I thought it kind of looked like a firework, I think in the pattern it's just blue, uh, to match this part of the hat, but I wanted it to be extra American, so, <laughs> but yeah, I think he's adorable, he's been living on our, our mantle, we call it a mantle, we don't have a fireplace, we live in an apartment, and it's not a fancy apartment that would have a fireplace. It's that little hole. Someone told me once what it was. But it's the hole between the living room and kitchen. Uh, that's got a ledge on it. And so we call it the mantle. So he's been living on the mantle ever since he got done. And I haven't been letting Jesse play with him. Because I know the moment he does, this is going to get destroyed. Because I'm not good at making pom-poms that stay together. Uh, I know some people have made videos about how to make them to where the strings don't fall out. But mine, the strings fall out easily. So 
he's off limits to Jesse until after the fair, and then he can do whatever he wants with it because I can always make another one. But yeah, I think he's adorable and he's ginormous, as you can see. He's huge. And I love him. Mm. I'll be pulling him out if he survives uh, every year, probably Memorial Day through 4th of July, and possibly again in September. Uh, I don't know. We should see any time an American holiday rolls around. Um, but he's cute. I don't think he's going to survive to next year, though, because Jesse really likes him. For some reason, he keeps calling him a coconut. I guess he resembles a coconut to a three-year-old. But yeah, so there's, um, what's his name? Spirit. <laughs> okay, I had to run real fast and, um, put my noodles in the water. It is boiling. It's hot in here because I have the air turned off so I could film without it kicking on, and now it's getting hot in here. My next, uh, finished objects, I actually made two of these. Try to make them look cuter before I show them to you. <laughs> uh, these are going to be for my craft fair that is in October. And I had a comment. Uh, I haven't responded to it yet because I'm, I'm kind of bad at doing that sometimes. But they asked me how the craft fair went and it hasn't actually happened yet. So hopefully it still does good. I have all the way until October the 12th. Which I think is the second, Oct or second Saturday in October to um, prepare for it. And I'm making a ton of amigurumi to take to it. Bigger and little and all kinds of stuff. But these are called... Bert the Baby Honey Bee by Holly Faith Salzman. And here they are, I made two of them. <laughs> like, they're not the perfectest. I think he's cuter than his little brother. This one looks grumpy. He's like, Ugh. and this one looks happy. Happy and grumpy. <laughs> but they're super cute and they're super duper easy. You make the head and it's just a circle. And then uh, this part is just like a little tube. And you attach them. And then you got little tiny arms are super simple, and the little wings are super sim super simple, and the antennae, or however you say that, <laughs> are super simple, and you just basically just stitch them on there and sew them together. Super simple, quick. You could you know you could easily pop a ton of these out if uh, you needed to make a ton of little bees. This poor little grumpy one. <laughs> he looks grumpier the more that I look at him. But they're super cute. I think they're adorable. It's a free pattern. Everybody loves free patterns. <laughs> and uh, they are they should be smaller. Because it called for um, DK weight and a smaller hook, but I don't like working with DK weight, so I used worsted weight and I think a, an elf hook or maybe an E. I can't remember E or elf. <laughs> so and it's just red heart colors, um, bright yellow, white, and black. And I forgot the eagle. The eagle is all red heart colors because I have a ton of red heart. <laughs> the only one that's not is his beak. It was a um, that yellow that I won from Holly. It's purple pineapple forever ago. But yeah, cute little bees. I love these little guys. I'll set them up there. I'm trying to keep them from getting squished before the the fair, the craft fair, so that they, you know, they don't look stupid. <laughs> Alright, my next finished object is the baby blanket that I was making for Jesse. Um, it's, it's marketed as a baby blanket, but I made it bigger than the pattern suggests. And I also put a little bit of a border around the edge to um, make it wider again. Um, because it came out narrow, you know, it was baby blanket size, so it was goofy looking kind of because it was really thin and long so I did I added border to the sides <laughs> but it's called the nap time baby blanket by Becky Barker <laughs> I'll say Baker Barker and it is actually from the Red Heart uh, website but yeah it's made with blanket yarn it's yarn be cozy something but and the the border that I added on the sides is wavy because I put too many stitches. It's pretty long. I didn't measure it. I should have measured it. And um, but it's perfect size for me to sit on the couch and have my whole like waist or you know like belly down covered. And I made it that way on purpose because I didn't know if Jesse would want it. And he actually has not showed any interest in it. I tried to give it to him. He told me it was a beautiful blanket, but when I tried to put it on him, he didn't want it. He has a blanket, a Ninja Turtle blanket, that Devin bought me when we were first dating years ago and um then after I had Jesse he just kind of claimed it and he's had it ever since so there's the border see how it's like wavy I put way too many stitches and by the time I noticed it I didn't want to fix it so I just did the same thing on the other side to make it look kind of ripply but it's cozy I love it even though it's got holes in it it's still super cozy and like I said I love it so I, I can use it on the couch now that I've showed it to you guys and Kat the girl that I babysit she likes it too so she'll probably use it sometimes too and I'm sure when we're using it Jesse will want it so um, it'll get used but yeah I used um, let's see here I had six balls I used almost completely five 
balls to make this. I had one like this much in its blanket yarn so it wasn't very much at all left over when I finished the border and then a whole nother ball and I just gave that to the girl that I babysit because uh, she wanted it and I didn't need want just one ball of blanket yarn. I thought about making some of those um, water balloon things but uh, she wanted it so I just gave it to her. So yeah, so there's a little blanket. And actually some of these things I can use in the Llama Mama bingo. I've, I have that printed out but I keep forgetting to update it. I did put spirit on it when I finished it but I didn't do the bees and I made two of those so I could use one as a kawaii or whatever because yeah I don't know I guess that counts and I think there was one that make it like a children's toy so and a blanket project so there's three squares right there that I can um, mark off of the bingo. My last finished object I can share now because it was a test pattern and um, I finished it. <laughs> A while uh, on the 13th I think I can't remember if I had a video come out before that but I couldn't share it because it was it wasn't released yet and it's a shawl I'm trying to get it I made it with knit crate yarn I think it's Vitalana no it's Aldine wools I think here it is it's kind of a gray stitch <laughs> I'm not gonna show something like this but it instead of it being flat it curves up like this I got a picture of it I'll insert it if I can remember of it laying out on the bed but um it's pretty good size. It's the two whole skeins of this yarn. I had just a little tiny, like maybe that big, <laughs> ball of it left afterwards. And um, I like it because it fits over my shoulders. And if I ever did wear a shawl, this is how I would wear it. Like when I'm outside at night, I wouldn't actually wear them decoratively because I don't dress. You know, I wear jeans and t-shirts. It wouldn't look right with <laughs> a jean and t-shirt, I don't think. But um, I mean, I guess if you wanted to, you could do the kerchief thing. But, um, it's an awesome pattern. I loved it. It was super quick and easy. Once you get started, you don't ever have to look at the pattern again. Because it's the same thing. The entire thing. And, uh, it, it, fly, it flew by pretty quickly. Try to fold it up a little bit. But it's called the Phoenix Shawl by Tammy. And I think her last name is Chevalier. I hope I say that right. Uh, she's been a long-time viewer of all of our podcasts around here. I've always seen her in the comments of everybody. And so she's, this is her first pattern that she put out. And it is available to purchase on Ravelry. If you're interested, it'll be linked below. And um, like I said, it's super quick and easy. And it turns out really pretty. It's kind of granny squarish esque I guess. But yeah, my holes are ginormous because my tension when I work with small yarn is horrible. Uh, people probably shouldn't ask me to test patterns for them unless it's worsted weight. Because um, my tension is just off when I work with smaller things. That's one reason I'm kind of afraid to ever make socks because they're just probably going to look horrible. But, um, I love this pattern. It went by super fast. I worked on it a lot outside while Jesse was playing in his little pool and stuff. Um, I would just sit out there in a lawn chair and work on it. And, yeah, so it's all done. It's pretty. And it's new crate yarn. Um, it's, it's a rock name. It's like Malachite or something like that. I can't remember. From a few months ago. Yeah, so that is all my finished objects. I gotta go check my food real fast. Mm, gosh, it smells so good in here. I'm cooking some chicken with like a rub on it and some macaroni and cheese. We haven't had macaroni and cheese in months. I don't know why I just quit buying it and then I just decided to buy some another day. But okay, this first whip I will show you. It's just barely started and it looks kind of funny. And I'll tell you what it kind of reminds me of in just a second. But the one that I have and I'm gonna rip out is the reindeer that I was working on for my Christmas wreath. Um, I was using this one pattern. I don't have it written down. But I talked about it in the last episode to make a little reindeer to put on my Christmas wreath as decoration. And it's a cute picture. But for some reason, I followed the pattern to like the T or whatever that saying is. And the head shape just kept coming out really oblong instead of circular. And um, so I just got tired of it. I'm just going to rip it out and I'm going to find a different <laughs> reindeer or possibly a snowman or something. I don't know. To, uh, to put on there. So I'm just going to. The pattern, I think, was in another language. It was in Spanish, I think, originally. And then translated to English. So I think maybe there's either an error in the translation or I just kept messing it up. But either way, I'm just going to get rid of it and find a new pattern and start all over. And that'll be fine because i got plenty of time to work on it. But my next whip, this is a pattern pack. It's like an ebook. My sister bought me two of them months ago and I'm just now starting it. I actually did start it once and uh, the colors were weird, so I, I ripped it out. But they're... Um, there's two books. This one that I'm working for is like the other holiday one. It's got Halloween and Thanksgiving and 
I think there's a leprechaun one and maybe a couple more. But it's called the um, Holiday Bottle Toppers by Maggie Weldon. And my sister bought them from me, for me, from her website, which I can't remember what it's called. It's called like maggiescrochet.com or something like that. She's got all kinds of patterns and uh, old magazine, not old, but you know, like past issues of magazines and stuff. It's really cool. It's kind of like Annie's crochet or whatever. But um, she wants the pilgrim ones made. And then I thought to kill two birds with one stone, which is a horrible saying, but you know, you get to just to, to do two things at once. Um, I would make them for her as a gift because she always hosts Thanksgiving at her house so she wants them as decoration but I could also use them before Thanksgiving in our county fair as Thanksgiving decorations and this is all I got so far <laughs> which is one of them's head there will be a two liter I think in the two liter comes up to like here and I'll probably have to stuff the head I have actually read the pattern which is a horrible thing you should always pre-read your patterns but when I originally started it a few months ago I started it in white because it tells you to start in white like white white not Caucasian color skin that people call white but like white white and um I thought that it was starting with like the collar of their outfit but it was starting with their head and I didn't want it to have white face because it looked like a ghost so uh, I ripped it out and then I started it and this is um red heart super saver buff and then a gray I don't know what this is called but it's red heart <laughs> it's like light gray but this is the start of his this is the boy one um his outfit and then later you do actually come back and add a collar in white but uh, I guess that's later. But yeah, so this is his head. <laughs> and uh, it'll go on a two liter bottle, bottle. I can't remember if I said that. But I guess you fill it with water or sand or something to keep it from falling over. And so I'm going to make the boy pilgrim and the girl pilgrim for my sister. And then she also bought me the Christmas um, ebook just because she loves me. <laughs> so it's got Santa and Mrs. Claus and an elf and like a reindeer. It's got a bunch of Christmas ones. So I have a ton of hollow... hollow day what am I trying to say holiday ones so over the course of the next few months you will probably see a bunch of these pop up because I love decorating for holidays and there just happens to be a couple of these for almost every major holiday so I will probably make all of them so that I can put them out in my house uh, around the right holidays but yeah so this is all I got so far <laughs> of the boy pilgrim I feel like the head is weird shaped it reminds me of the brave little toaster if you know that movie from like the 90s um, the blanket, he has, you know, he's an electric blanket, so he's got the knob that turns him on. This reminds me of his face. It's got the knob on it. <laughs> it's like the same shape. But I'm assuming, I haven't read the pattern, like I said, but I'm imagining the head is stuffed. And then the bottle, like, the bottle rests right here. Or maybe the cap a little bit inside here. I don't know. I should probably look ahead. Because this is not round at all. It's very square, as you can tell. But, um, you know, it'll shape it out if it was stuffed. Because you start with a chain and then you work around in an oval. But, yeah. So, there's that. <laughs> it's in a big old project bag because I got all the yarn already stuffed down in there. And they're big. They're full balls just about. And uh, I like to do that with projects that I can. I stuff everything for it in a bag so that it's all already there. And I can just grab it and go if we're going to the park or something. But, yeah. So, that's that. That's a lot about that. <laughs> But there it is. And then my last whip that I am actually working on before I start some new whips is the High Tide High Tide Waves Blanket by Bebo Blanket. <laughs> it was free pattern uh, when the, the cow started, but now it's paid for pattern. I started, I attached my second jumble ball. <laughs> this was one of those jumble skeins of Red Heart Ombre and I wound it into a ball to make it easier to work with and plus I needed the inside color to be on the outside to keep the colors the same on the blanket. Because even though I'm not controlling the colors a big time, I do. I, I didn't want it to go from the light color to a dark color instantly and that's what it would have done if I hadn't have done that. Yeah. So um, last time I showed it I had just finished part two and I've only, I think I've only done like two or three rounds since. But it's just because I've been going through a lot of stuff at home and I uh, haven't had a lot of time to crochet. But it, hopefully it'll start picking up again. So I'm going to try to show it to you. I'm trying to stretch it out because it's not blocked yet. Obviously it's not done. But it's still super pretty as it is. Here it is so far. I really love it because it kind of reminds me of when I worked on the Mandala Madness. And so I'm, I'm just up here. <laughs> I'm doing this. And I'm to a point in the pattern where... It's basically going to be a certain amount of rows repeated to make it bigger. So, um, and it's a square now. I think it was a square last time, yeah. And, yeah. I think it's really pretty already. It'd be a really pretty pillow. 
if you made two of them and then sewed them together. Or, you know, you'd have to line them because there's big holes. But either way, I think it's going to be pretty. This I'm going to enter into our county fair as a baby blanket, I think. Unless I make it bigger. Because they have a way in the pattern that you can just, you know, you just keep repeating it. And it'll get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until, you know, however big you want to make it. But, um, I don't know if I'm going to want to do that. I do have two more full jumbo skeins of the Red Heart Ombre. This is scuba, by the way. So I might just try to use up all of that. I don't know. I'll have to wait and see how I feel about it when uh, I get to a bit where it's bigger because I might be tired of working on it by then. But yeah, so I think this is really pretty and it is available for purchase. I think it's only like five or six dollars. And for a pattern that's this intricate, that's totally worth it. And if you're a county fair enterer like I am, um, you could potentially make your money back because if, <clears throat> even though I did get this for free, had I bought it, um, first place at our fair, Blue Ribbons is $3, so you would get like half of it back. But Best in Show is $10. So if I um, enter this in the fair and get Best in Show, I'll make a $10 profit. But if I had bought it, I would make like a 5 to $6 or 5 to $4 profit, depending on how much the pattern is. I think it's $5, but it may be 6 So don't quote me. <laughs> but it'll be linked below either way. But yeah, so I'm working on that. Hopefully that'll be bigger by the next time I film. That is all of my active whips. I have a couple things that I want to start. I have a bunch more amigurumis. My hair looks crazy. Um, that I want to start. And I have a cardigan-like thing that I want to make. Just because I want to. There's no actual reason for it. And I don't know. I, there's blankets that I want to start. Because all the, I think they're called sweet rolls. The yarn bee cakes that were on sale at Hobby Lobby recently. I want to make something with them. <laughs> they're also pretty set in there. And I've got a bunch of each of them. Because I bought... I thought I bought six of all the colors that I liked, but one I only bought three of, and it's 330 something yards, I think, each. So, um, I mean, that's still a lot of that one to make a decent sized kid, you know, blanket. And yeah, so I'm going to show you my, my one acquisition. <laughs> I actually got this at the thrift store that I love to go to. It's a local one, it's not a chain one. I don't really like going to the chain one um, Goodwill because of, uh, you know, personal reasons. <laughs> I don't want to get into it. But this local one actually helps our local community. Um, like our tri-county area because there's there's three of, three, four, let's see here. Cookville, McMinnville, Sparta, don't let me out. There's four of them local to us in the surrounding counties. What am I trying to say? <laughs> I'm, I'm really spazzed out lately. But um, anyways, I was in there. I bought this chair that I'm sitting in. You can't see it. It was three dollars and it's really cool vintage like kitchen chair and I liked it so I bought it. And then I bought this because I couldn't leave it there. It's a full skein of Red Heart Super Saver Honeydew. And I actually made a um, baby cocoon uh, last year, I think it was. This was the base of it. And then I used pinks and blues and purples to make the feathery crocodile stitches and stuff. If I can think about it, I'll pop up a picture. Because I, I know I have a picture of it. Um, and I really like this color. And it's actually not sold locally at any of the Walmarts near me. Um, so I had some in my stash then. And then I ended up having to get some trade it to me. I know I could order it, but I like doing trades better than actually ordering stuff. So when I saw this at the thrift store, I grabbed it because it's a pretty color and I can make something with it. <laughs> um, I don't know, an amigurumi here or something. Because um, it's a pretty, whoop, pretty colored green. <laughs> but yeah, so it's a full ball too. The the thing hasn't even been pulled out. You know, we're, the outside ball is stuck in there. So that means the, look at there, it's right there. How lucky. <laughs> but yeah, so that's my one acquisition. Woohoo! Alright. Let's get on to the new crate. I didn't have this out to show you guys the other day and I was trying to explain which one it was and I'm not good at that. But it is Aldine Wools. It's this mint color, which is kind of similar. Well, this one's bluer. Super soft. I got this a few months ago. It is DK Aldine Wools Psy and it's called Leaf Feeder. 85% <laughs> uh, Merino Wool, 15% Cashmere. Fancy. Um, 302 yards each, 100 grams, blah, 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 all the care instructions. Same old, same old. Very pretty. So I'm going to uh, pull up the video here so I can get the comments, and then I'm going to draw someone, and then I'm going to check and make sure they're a subscriber, and then I will tell you guys who it is. <laughs> okay, I had to also take my macaroni off the stove. I kind of forgot it was boiling, so it may be a little overdone. And I'm also super shiny now because of that. I had to drain it the old-fashioned way because my colander is dirty. So I had to use a plate and I was afraid of dropping it. And then I got a nice facial. So my face is red and shiny. <laughs> but free facial is good. But the winner is... I'll drum roll it. Da -da -da -da. 
Sean Feetman. I hope I said that right. Oh, you're not going to be able to see it that good. There you go. <laughs> uh, they said, I love greens and blues too. I need to get that turtle pattern. Love him. Your bags are awesome. So that's cool. They were agreeing with me because some of my favorite color combos are green and blue together, which is a really good color combo, I think. But yeah, so Sean, you will get these two hanks of um, what's it called again? Audi Moles <laughs> from Knit Crate. And I'll go ahead and throw the pattern book in there too because um, I'm probably not going to make anything out of this because I don't like using dainty yarns. <laughs> I've learned that. <laughs> I'm a worsted weight kind of gal or a bigger DK weight. Sometimes DK weight, but anyways. So you're the winner. Please contact me through a comment or on the Facebook group or through Instagram or my email. <laughs> Either way. Um, and I'll try to get this out to you as soon as possible. So congratulations for winning that secret giveaway. And let me just put that back in the box so that nothing happens to it. I may just send it to you in the box. <laughs> I wonder if I can resend this box. Like if I put a new label over it, I shouldn't be able to, right? Tape it shut and send it off. Ugh. Okay, it's in there. It's safe. Toddler will not touch it. <laughs> All right. I have a couple other things that I want to talk about. One is my Etsy shop. I'm currently working on a whole bunch of bags and a bunch of different prints. Um, I got a little bit of them right here. These are cut up pieces of them because the bags are actually in my living room where I've been sewing on them today. They're almost done. I just have one more step to do to all of them and the bags will be done and then I have to make the zipper notion pouches. But I got some more of the tie dye, which is my personal favorite. I got some more teapots and um, I'm going to have two sets of these, but I'm going to specifically save one back for Seta because I've made these. This will be the third time and she's wanted them. The other two times and she wasn't able to get them before someone else did so there'll only be one going up in my shop and the other one i will be reserving for seta if she still wants it then i will make her a um special post or whatever i picked this out because i thought it was cute it is purple and pink kind of i don't know it kind of reminds me of like the 90s that sponge painting people used to do on their houses <laughs> that with butterflies and little flowers right now yeah. flowers this one I thought was so pretty. I love birds and I've gotten really into it. I'm like an old person. I have bird feeders and I love to just sit there and watch them eat. <laughs> but um, this is a very pretty bird with flowers. It kind of reminds me of a watercolor a little bit because when you look at it up close, it's not exactly in the lines. So it's kind of watercolor-esque. Um, and this one, it's not a good, it's just scrap pieces, like I said. <laughs> so it's sugar skulls and they are sparkly. Oh, you can't see it, but they are. And then I have... Um, Nightmare Before Christmas print, but this is, like I said, this is just chunks left over. <laughs> but it's got Jack and Sally and Zero on it. And then my other favorite, this is Sparkly also, but it's Galaxy or Outer Space. And look at it, it's super sparkly. I love this. As soon as I saw this, I was like, I'm getting that. <laughs> because um, I had a Galaxy one before and it sold pretty fast. So I think I'm not the only person who likes space, but. Uh, yeah, so those will all be, I think there's 15 all together. There's two of each of those, plus there's another Jack Skellington one. Um, but it's going to be smaller because I had a smaller piece of fabric that was give it, gifted to me. And so I made, it's going to be a little bit smaller or a project bag, but it's still going to be a project bag with a, a zipper notions pouch. And it'll probably be a little bit cheaper because it's going to be smaller. And I do have a ton of crab bags cut. They just need to be, um lot or interfaced or whatever and then sewn and I don't know if I'm gonna get around to that right now because uh what I was gonna say my announcement before I got distracted by the prints is after these bags are up and sold and if they don't sell you know in a, a few weeks I will probably mark them down a little bit just try to push them to get them sold after all the bags are gone out of my shop is what I'm trying to say is I'm gonna I'm thinking about closing it for a little while um I will bring it back. I just don't know when. It could be a few weeks after I close it or it might be a month or so or, you know, longer. <laughs> it's just I've got a lot of personal stuff going on. Nothing bad. I don't want anybody to worry about me. Just a lot of, um, I guess I would say mental health stuff. I'm just trying to work through. I'm not sure if you guys noticed, but sometimes I get really um, frazzled like I am right now. I'm really frazzled right now, I can tell. And that's also probably why my face is red because I'm... I need to calm down. <laughs> But, um, I'm just going through stuff and I want to work through it and I don't want to necessarily have all kinds of obligations. So I want to pause the No Catch Your Name Etsy shop for a little while. I need to focus on the craft fair that I already, you know, already signed up for and, um, paid for and all that. So, you know, it's already there. It's set in stone. I got to prepare for that. 
and um, I think I might pull the reins back a little bit on our county fair. I'm not going to go so hardcore trying to make you know enter every category like I normally do. And the videos I don't want to cut out. Um, so I want the Etsy shop seemed like the easiest thing to slow down um, without stepping completely back from No Kitchen Name because I don't want to to leave everybody. You know I love my friendships that I've made and all that, but I do need to just take a step back for my own sake. <laughs> and I know most of y'all will understand that because. Um, everybody I've made friends with, whoops, I just hit the table, um, you know, they've experienced different things too, I know, so, um, I know that it's understandable, I don't have to explain myself and keep babbling about it, but anyways, I just want you, everybody who has been messaging me and asking me about it, um, I appreciate that, and it, I just wanted to let everybody know that it's nothing major, you know, it's nothing horrible that's going on, it's just stuff that I need to process, so I need space to step back and do that. <laughs> If that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. If not, I'm sorry. But uh, I, I still will make videos. They just may not, uh, they've already not been super <laughs> um, um, on schedule. I don't know what I'm looking for. But there still be, will still be videos and I'm still very active on Facebook. I'm almost always on Facebook because that's how I keep in contact with most of my family. Uh, so I'm, I'm always on Facebook. <laughs> so if you're, if you want to, um, hear from me more often, I guess, uh, join the Facebook group. If you're not on Facebook, I do have an Instagram, but I'm mostly like a watcher on Instagram. I watch and comment on other people's stuff and I hardly ever post my own stuff because I, I normally just forget. Hey guys, I'm sitting here right now on the couch editing, um, the video <laughs> and I realized that I lost a clip or something. The end of my video is missing. <laughs> so I either deleted it or was it recording maybe i don't know uh that's a problem when i'm cutting it on and off when i'm like busy cooking or whatever but anyways so i'm editing it so i thought i'd stick this clip in there real fast but um thank you guys for watching and subscribing and my subscriber count has went up and it's awesome so thank you to all the returning subscribers and to all the new people hi <laughs> and i will see you guys in the next video bye guys